Hello everybody and welcome. This is Roland Hartman from Graphic in Motion and in this tutorial I will show you how you can customize my fly through words and images opener template. Before we get started in After Effects I just want to point out a few things. So let's take a look at the project folder of this template. If you take a look at the project folder, you will see that we have a few folders in here. And what I recommend you to do before you open up one of the After Effects project files is that you install the necessary fonts. The template uses a font that's called Nexa. If you take a look at the links folder, you see that there is a link to a website. So let's take a look. And you see here you can download the Nexa free bold version and the Nexa free light version. So please download both of these versions, install them on your system and then you're good to go and start or open up one of the After Effects project files. The After Effects project files are in the folders called Full HD project files and 4K project files. I think that the names are pretty self-explanatory. Inside this folder you have the 4K Ultra HD resolution files and in this folder you have the full HD standard 1080p resolution files. And the files are exactly the same in both folders. You see we always have two different versions of the picture opener and of course you can also use videos so it's only called picture opener but yeah you can put in any footage into these placeholders. I will show you this in a minute. And then we have of course the keywords or the words opener. And we always have one version that requires no plugins at all and we have one version that requires optical flares. So whatever version you want to use and whether you have optical flares installed on your system or not, just choose the right After Effects project and open it up. Now I jump to After Effects and you see that I work with the fly through pictures opener HD using the optical flares just to show you the customization. Uh, the customization process is more or less exactly the same for all versions of course, so especially for the words and the pictures version. The only difference is that inside the, the pictures or the footage version you can of course import your footage and your videos or your, your pictures. And in both versions you can of course edit all the keyframes. So I will show you this now. Let's get started by importing a logo. To import a logo to one of the projects, so let's take a look uh, on the end of this animation here. You see in the end I have this placeholder in here. And if you want to put in your logo you can move to the logo composition. And inside the logo composition you have a simple text layer. So you see that this also works with text layers and with any element that has a transparent background. So let's import a logo. Therefore I go to file and choose import and choose import file. You see we have a shortcut that's control I or you could also just double click on an empty space in the project window. And through my dialog I will now just move to my logo folder and I'll import my graphic in motion logo and I will drag it on top of my placeholder and now I have to scale it down because it's quite big and now I want to position it a little bit more upwards because I want to enter a tagline beneath the logo so let's enable the title action save markers for a moment and just move our logo a little bit upwards let's say like this and I will disable my placeholder and take a look at the setup and render comp and you see now my logo is visible here in the end. What I want to do now is I want to edit the tagline. You see that the tagline is this blue layer right in the setup and render composition. It's only a simple text layer so you can just select it and make sure that your cursor is near this marker here. You see that the marker says edit tagline behind this marker and this means that uh, in front of this marker the tagline is not fully revealed and you cannot see what you're doing so move your cursor behind this marker and then you can edit your tagline. So let's double click this layer to enter a new title and I will enter www.graphicandmotion.com which is my website and now I want to position this a little bit better. You see I think it's a little bit too close to my logo so I will just select the layer and this is important you see that this is an animated layer so this line here um, is an indication for that and if you press U on your keyboard you see that there are keyframes on this layer and we do not want to mess up the animation so please make sure that your timeline cursor is 
positioned exactly at the last keyframe here. You see, you can just move through the keyframes with these arrows here. So just position your marker on the last keyframes, and now you're good to change the position. In my case, I would just drag it down a bit on the Y axis, so just a little bit on the green axis here. And I think this looks pretty good. And now I just want to increase the size a bit so that's a little bit bigger, covering up my logo a little bit better, like that. And this looks good for me now. Okay, so far, so good. The next step that I want to show you is I want to show you how you can import some footage here. So let's take a look at another frame where we can see our footage placeholders. And here you see we have a lot of them. Actually, there are 50 footage placeholders visible, but you do not have to enter 50 different pictures. Uh, you can enter up to 25 different pictures. So let's take a look at the folder called footage placeholders. So open this one up and now you see we have 25 footage placeholders. Each placeholder represents two, uh, yeah, two of these white squares. So if I enter a footage in placeholder number one, it, it will appear twice in our animation. So let's open up footage placeholder number one and let's replace these placeholders with a picture. Therefore, I again choose import file and I move to my stock footage folder. And as I already said, this works with photos and of course it works with videos too. So whatever you put in, you can use it. So let's take this picture here just as an example and open it up and I will just drag it on top of my placeholder. Now I have to scale it down. It's a little bit too big. And now if I go to my setup and render comp, you will see immediately now our footage is already visible here. So let's import a few more here just that we have something to work with here. I will import, let's say this one, and I will import that one, that one, and one more, this sheep here. Okay, so I have four pictures. So I will open up placeholder number two. Let's put this in here too, scale it down. Like so, placeholder number four. Let's take the sheep here and scale it down. Placeholder number four, let's take uh, this one here and scale it down. And now let's see, I think that I still have one more. So placeholder number five, I put in the sports car and just scale it down. And now let's take a look what this did. So go to the setup and render comp and you see now it updates and we have immediately our footage is visible. So the next step of our customization process would be to change all the keyframes. You see that in the pictures version, the keywords are more or less only design elements. You see that you can see all the letters, but you're not really able to read any of the keywords. I mean, in the end, they, they come together uh, while forming the logo. So while this animation, this build-up animation is happening, the keywords come together and they get a little bit more obvious. But actually, I think that uh, Editing the keywords is, of course, way more important if you work with the words version. And by the way, it works exactly the same for both uh, project files. So we will work in the edit keywords composition. But before I show you how to edit the keywords, I will quickly open up a fly through words opener project. So I will just pause this recording and I will be back within a second with the new project. Okay, now I am in the fly through words opener version and you see that in here we have no footage, we have all the keywords. And now let's edit the keywords in this project. It works exactly the same in the other one, but of course in this version it's a little bit more important to edit the keywords. So let's go to the edit keywords composition and you see inside this composition we have 25 text layers, keyword number one to keyword number 25 and here you have also, you, you see the keywords. So you can enter your keywords. Let's start by just double clicking keyword layer number one and let's enter, for example, After Effects and second keyword will be, let's say, Motion Design and the third one will be Templates, oops, Templates. The fourth one will be Graphic in Motion 
I will do something like um, whatever words you want to put in. Okay, so I put in a few keywords. So let's take a look at the setup in render comp. What's happening is that now the keywords should be updated. And yeah, you see actually there are still a lot of the placeholders visible, of course, because I changed only a few, but you see that the other ones are already visible here. So I recommend that you add 25 keywords. If you do not have different keywords, it doesn't matter. You can just simply use one uh, twice. So just copy it over or maybe also this one, copy it over. And then you see that you will fill up all these keyword placeholders with your keywords. Uh, one more hint, if you want to change the look of the keywords, it has no effect if you change it here. So for example, if I take keyword number one and I would make it a bold version here, it has no influence on my final look because this is something that you cannot link through expressions. So you can only control the source text. So whatever you put in in this line here will appear in the render. But if you change the look of the font, it will have no influence on the keywords displayed here. If you want to change the look of the font, you have to enter another composition. And I will show you this composition now. It's called the keywords precomp here. So open this one up and let's take a look at this composition. And in this composition, you see, I will quickly uh, change the view from two views to one because it's a little bit better. And I will also change the active camera to custom view. You can also do these changes and then you have a little bit better overview over your words. So let's wait until this is updated and it's not yet finished. Okay, now it's finished. So you see, we have really a lot of, of keywords here. And if you take a look at this composition and scroll down in the timeline, then you will see we have around, uh, let's see, I don't even know it, 320 layers. So yeah, I put a lot of keywords in and these layers are linked, all linked to these keywords here. So whatever you put in here will control all of these layers. So if you want to change the look of your text here, I recommend that you do not change all of the layers at once because this probably will crash your system if you want to change 320 uh, text layers. I recommend you that you just use, for example, the first 50. And this is why I actually colored these. So I will for a moment just reduce my resolution here because I have a little bit uh, performance problems here right now because I'm recording this. So let's just reduce it to half and let's scale this down a bit. And now if you want to change the look of these keywords, you can simply select the first 50 keywords, which are actually colored green and which are the visible ones, the readable ones. So if you want to change, for example, the size of them, make them a little bit bigger, then just select all of the layers and then put in the new value that you want to add. I now put in 120 and don't worry, you know, uh, sometimes it may have a little bit of a problem, but be a little bit patient and After Effects will calculate through the change and it should work. It of course depends a little bit on the performance of and the power of your system. So now you see, I just increased the size of all the readable and visible keyframes. I will just undo this because I don't want them to be bigger. So I will just change it back to 100, which is the standard value. But of course, now you can pick certain keywords that you want to enhance and you can change them to bold. So let's say maybe, um, I don't know, let's see what do we have here. Graphic in motion and graphic in motion was, I uh, do not remember it now. Graphic in motion was keyword number four. So I can come in here in my keywords pre-comp, choose keyword number four. And now I can simply change this from Nexa light to Nexa bold. And now this keyword should be bold, which it is, as you see. You can see that a few keywords are already bold and some of them are not. So you can change this manually by manipulating these 50 green layers. 
You can of course also change the look and the font and the size of all the other layers. You see that they are also colored in different colors. There are always 50 layers colored in one color. So if you want to change all of them, I recommend that you do this in steps. Select the 50 of these uh, bluish and then make your changes, whatever you want to change in the characters. And then select the next bunch of layers and make your changes just to make sure that your uh, project is not crashing and of course save the file from time to time so that you do not lose too much time if something goes wrong. Okay, so I think that this is uh, the keyframe layer. Of course, if you do not want so many keyframes, I have to mention that quickly, you could of course turn some of these layers off. So for example, if I just, let's say, I just select layer number 202 here, and then I scroll down to the bottom until uh, 319, and I just make all of these invisible, you see that now I do not have so many keyframes, so the performance will be better, and yeah, the look will be a little bit different. If we take a look at our render composition, you see that immediately this project is getting yeah a different look. So you can also control this, uh, how many keywords you want by just enabling and disabling some layers in the keywords pre-comp. And by the way, this of course is exactly the same in the other project in the fly through pictures versions. So I think that we can move to the next step. And the next step is to change the look of this. So you see that standard look is quite dark and we have colored keywords and we have of course colored layers and you can of course change all these colors. Therefore you simply move to the setup and render composition and you select the setup layer and then move to the effect controls panel and you see we have a bunch of options here to change the look of our project. So I will walk you through these. The first four here are called words colors and if you work in the fly through pictures version and you will see we only have one color that controls all the words. In this version it's a little bit different because here I could play around a little bit more so I put in four different colors that you can change. If you want to have a unique color for all the words then you simply can take over one color for all of them for example so I will just change all four colors now to the same color and let's wait until he updates it and you see now all of them have the same color but of course you can come in and change the colors here and create your own look. Now I change the first value and you will see that in the middle here the colors we change quite a bit and the other colors are uh, more on the borders here so if I change this to green let's see what this does and you see this corner here got affected by this. I will just undo this for now and I will keep the words in one color. Actually, what I want to do now is I want to create a version with a light background, just to show you that this is possible too, of course. So let's say we want to create a light background. Therefore, we just take a look here and we have two background colors to edit. And the first one is a very dark blue color. So let's change this to, let's say, a kind of bright gray. And you see immediately, okay, this has some effect on the look. And the second color, we will change this maybe to a little bit of a darker gray, not too dark, but a little bit. Okay, so this looks not too good because we have to change, of course, the look of our words. So now let's take a dark blue color for our words here. So maybe something like this. And I will take over the same color just to make it a little bit quicker. And now you see that all our words are colored and this looks a bit better already. Actually, it doesn't look too bad if I put in a little bit more blue on the sides here. So I just will add a little bit more blue here. Okay, and now what we can do if we want is we can uh, disable the words glow. So actually, if the words are very dark, it's maybe better to turn off the glow. And if we turn off the glow, you see what will happen. Now we have a little bit more clearer look if we turn it on. Yeah, whatever you prefer, you know, you can turn on and off the glow with this words glow on and off switch. And the next option is to change the color of the flares. We have six flares in this project and you see that all six are colored right now. I mean, you have, you can change the color. You do not have to, you see, it doesn't look too bad actually with the settings that we have here. So I think in my case, I will not even change any flare colors here, but if you want, you can of course change it.
The next one, the logo overlay color, is a very important one. If you take a look at frame number, I don't know, around 13 seconds and 20 frames, you see that there are these dark pieces appearing. And these dark pieces are actually a version of whatever you put into this logo comp. Of course, now I have my logo not in here because I, I added it to the other project. This is still the placeholder, but it doesn't matter. So you see that this is forming our logo. And whatever color you choose will, will represent your color in the beginning. And later on, of course, um, a reveal will happen and will reveal the colors, the original colors of your logo. You see, in my case, my logo is white right now. So here we have a white logo. That's not too good because we have a dark background. So I will probably change this later. But just for now, I want to deal with this logo overlay color. And here you can specify the color. And I think in this case, it's quite dark and we do not even see the, the words anymore. So I recommend you that you use a color that is uh, similar to your background color, but maybe a little bit darker. So in my case, I will select a little bit of a gray here. So let's take a look, maybe even a little bit darker. I think this looks quite good. And if we take a look at this frame here, then let's see, you see we have these pieces, they are coming together and they are forming our logo in the end and then our logo is revealed. So I will quickly enter my comp here and I will change the color to black so that we have a better contrast. And now if I go to my setup and render comp, you see that in the end my logo is revealed to its original color. So one more hint here, if you have a very bright logo, in my case, we won't see uh, much differences now, but there is the option to uh, turn on the glow or turn off the glow of the logo reveal. If I do this now, you see nothing is happening because of course a glow is not really having an effect on a dark layer. But if your logo is colored, then you can try whether you prefer a glow on your reveal or not. So the next one is the tagline and you see the tagline now is of course white so I cannot really see it. You can change the color right here. So let's take black here too. Now it's visible. And then of course we have the grid opacity and the grid color. If we take a look, I cannot even see the grid right now. Um, I will change the grid color from this light blue to something like a dark blue then we should see it again. And now you can see it again in the background. And of course you can also change the opacity. So now it's set to 10%, so it's pretty light and pretty decent, but maybe you want to have it a little bit stronger Then we could set it to 25. And you will see immediately that this has an effect on the look of our grid. If you do not want the grid, then of course you can set it to 0% and it will not be visible. Then we have a really clean look. And of course, another option, let's bring the grid back, is to change the blur amount of the grid. Maybe if you want to uh, get the impression that the grid is a little bit more in the background, then you can blur it a bit. So let's just add, I don't know, about 10, a value of 10 to the blur. And you see immediately that now the grid is blurred and looks kind of way in the background. So this is another option to stylize the look. Now, if we zoom out, you see that our vignette is a bit too strong maybe for this setup. So if you do not like the vignette settings, then just go to this small guy here, the hide all buttons and click it. And we have revealed all the elements and layers that are used in the setup and render comp. And you see here is the vignette. And you can change the transparency here from 45 to 25. It's probably for a light setup, it's better. And you can also uh, disable or enable the flares. So if you do not want any flares, maybe you want a really clean project without flares, without a grid or whatever you want to create, you can just unhide all layers and let's say just make all these flares invisible. This of course also works in the versions that do not need any optical flares plugins. So the no plugins version and what I want to mention also is you can of course also change the colors in the no plugins versions. Okay, so last but not least, you can enter your audio. We have an audio composition right here and you see it's also here in the render setup and render comp. Uh, if you want, you can just drag your audio file directly into this composition without using this pre-comp, but you can also use this pre-comp. You can simply import your audio file through the dialog 
import file and then just drag it in the audio layer or composition. Make sure that it starts on frame zero and then you're good to go to render out the setup and render composition. One last hint, we have a color correction layer. So if you select the color correction layer and take a look at the effect controls, you see that we have a simple curves adjustment. And if I disable this for a moment, you see that this just adds a little bit more contrast. So whatever style you want to create or whatever look you want to create, you can of course change the curve settings right here. Okay, so I think that this is it. I hope that you like this template and that you can create some impressing openers with it. Have fun. If you have any problems with the template or questions, then feel free to contact me through my video hive profile or also through my website, which is www.gravicinmotion.com. I thank you very much for watching and I really hope to see you soon. Goodbye.